Hey, what's going on? This is Ravi Krishnaswamy. I'm the creative director and co-founder of Copilot Music and Sound. I thought this would be a good time to kind of make a video about music-driven campaigns. It's something that we're really specialists at. We kind of uh, get called for a lot of these zany ideas that start with a musical idea and then become a marketing campaign or something else. This is kind of a good time to think about stuff like that if you're in the marketing business or you're trying to create content because you can't go out and shoot anything. I mean, not safely. So if you're just stuck with what you've shot already or stock footage, you know, how could you create new content um, and something that's engaging and, and uh, draws people in to whatever story you're trying to tell? Uh, for us, being musicians, you know, uh, working remotely has kind of worked, worked out really well for us for years at Copilot. Um, sure, I mean, you can't get a whole band together in a room right now and record them live. I think back to the soundtrack that we did for Wolfenstein in 2013-2014 for Bethesda Softworks, and that production was completely bonkers in a good way. On one song, we had a composer in California, a sitar player somewhere else in California, a client in Bethesda, Maryland, translator of the lyrics was in Vienna, the singer was in, I want to say, Hamburg. I was doing engineering work and uh, overseeing the production up in New Haven, and uh, Jason was producing down in New York. Most of the musicians that we work with are set up to record from home. You know, if you're a music lover and your heart is broken right now for all the musicians that are not able to go out and perform, you know, if they're Broadway musicians, classical musicians, uh, jazz, pop, whatever it is, they're stuck at home, they're not making any money. But if you can pull them into a recording project, they can probably pick up some se session fees during this this whole thing. So it's a way to kind of actually bolster the music industry right now to think about, you know, how could you create a piece of music that tells a story or, or um, creates uh, a brand awareness or feeling or identification in your audience that you never had before. Music is particularly music that you've composed from scratch and have commissioned and bought outright. It's an incredibly powerful asset to, to have. It can, can be used in almost any different medium. Uh, it can be cut down. It can be lengthened. It can be rearranged for different audiences. And not only can it move from medium to medium, again, if you own it as a work for hire, you, you never have to actually re-license it the way you would with a piece of stock music or a famous song from an artist that you've licensed. You just, you can do whatever you want with it. Uh, in uh, some of the soundtrack projects that we've been involved in, that's been a really powerful tool for the game publisher to be able to put it inside the game, to put it in the trailer, to even have it uh, performed live at an, an event. Um, so there's a lot you can do. Uh, we're all ready to go and write something. Our musicians are all at home ready with their microphones, ready to record something. All you got to do is think about uh, what, you know, what your idea is. So I, what I want to do is just kind of show you three projects that we worked on really quickly in this video. The first is uh, what I would consider a traditional jingle um, from the old school tradition of jingles for a company called Blue Fly that does uh, fashion uh, by delivery. And we worked on this, I would say, a good 10 years ago now. So it's a, it's a little dated, you'll see, but um, it's a really fun project headed up by uh, a, a legend in the advertising industry, Bill Lane, who ran J. Walter Thompson, uh, wrote lyrics for the Carpenters and for uh, huge, some huge jingles for Ford and uh, Northwest Airlines. So he had this account for Blue Fly that he brought, brought to us and 
at our old shop, Sacred Noise, we got together and uh, the team produced a song which was basically like a pop song that you could hear on the radio, but it told the story of the Blue Fly Shopper. So here's the song. some of the subsequent rearrangements. The idea behind a jingle is that you write it and then you can reimagine it, but you keep the, the essential memorable elements of it and you lean on that equity. So for a 15 second TV spot that we produced, uh, the idea was that the protagonist shows up at a wedding and has nothing to wear, so she's naked. It's a spicy spot. but. I was given the task of taking this melody, turning it into an instrumental um, piece for a string quartet, the kind you might have at a wedding ceremony doing uh, processional music. So here's that spot. That's why. Nothing to wear to the wedding? That's why. I Guess the bride won't be the only one blushing. That's why. I Always there. When you have nothing to wear. The last example is actually a movie trailer uh, that was co uh, co promoted with Blue Fly uh, for Confessions of a Shopaholic. And what we did was we worked the Blue Fly melody into more of a trailer score. So this shows how you can take a piece of musical DNA that you've created and uh, it becomes your brand. And you can put it in other contexts, combine it with other things later on. Really useful, flexible medium to work with. Here's uh, the trailer for Shopaholic. Nothing to wear? For inspiration, see Confessions of a Shopaholic in theaters February 13th and go to bluefly.com. Always there when you have nothing to wear. Confessions of a Shopaholic, rated PG. So anyway, I want to move on to uh, a gaming project that we worked on a few years ago for uh, Bethesda. It was called uh, Dishonored, a really well-regarded game, and we were lucky enough to write the music for the uh, big trailer for E3. I'll play you the trailer here in the video, and then I'll kind of talk about what made this project special from the perspective of creating music before you actually have your visual material ready.
So as you can see, this trailer was pretty tightly scored and there were some moments in the lyrics that very precisely lined up to some of uh, the action you're seeing on screen. Slice's throat with a rusty cleaver is a great example um, of, of what I'm talking about. Now, this the visuals for this trailer actually didn't exist when we started writing the piece. We got involved on a more... Uh, basic level where we were freed of the visual we were able to really think about what is the sound world we're going for so as we got to, to writing this piece it became apparent that the the most helpful we could be for our client was to cr give them a lot of material that they could use while they were cutting their gameplay footage because gameplay footage editing is is its own art you you kind of you're half video editor half player um, you want to create compelling scenes out of what the game engine will give you uh, so we had a conversation with them about what were all the different ways to die in the game and then we wrote probably eight stanzas of lyrics which we recorded in full of all the different ways to die and we gave that very very long piece of music to their trailer editor and they were able to take that cut to it wasn't it great to have something that you own that you can cut to that's another huge advantage of starting with the music before your project if you have a killer piece of music when you can go out and shoot again then your edit falls right into place because your music's already approved and mm -hmm. and it's driving <clears throat> the structure of your piece so we gave them this, this piece, it, it had a nice build, but it had all these extra stanzas, and they figured out which ways to die were the most compelling visually. Cut the trailer, we came in and did a little polish on the song, cut it down, used the stanzas that they picked, and, um, and we were done. Uh, but another thing I want to talk about with this project was that um, what I was saying before about music having this uh, way of crossing into different mediums and being flexible and, and traveling the way that video can't, um, and also getting stuck in your head the way that video can't. Well, it turned out that the response to the trailer, uh, people were very excited about the game, people were very excited about the game footage, but they were also super excited about this piece of music. And we had a conversation said okay how can we capitalize on this and not even capitalize but you know sort of turn that passion that we were getting from the comment section on youtube for the trailer and create more content more experience for the their audience and what we ended up doing which was uh really uh a totally fun experiment was we posted the stems of the piece of music because they own it so they can do whatever they want with it they posted the stems and had a remix competition and we got some amazing remixes of this piece people were so into it um, and in fact I think one of the remixes might have even been used the winning remix might have even been used in one of their subsequent trailers I'm not sure the city writhed and changed. For six months, I tried to forget what I'd done to the Empress and her little girl. Whatever doom was coming, I 
deserved it. But not yet. But that's a great example of music creating its own engagement and not just being the sort of thing you have to add at the end of your production. Oh, yeah, yeah, we got to add music and then we got to mix it. Um, I, I get so irritated when I see that attitude about it, when you can be so much more creative with it. Um, you know, in terms of uh, creating IP, an asset that you own that, that is memorable, they ended up having the guards in the um, game whistling the melody of this song. So they created a connection in game to the tr to the trailer. The the song was eventually used in a subsequent trailer for a DLC release. Um, so it really became part of the identity. It, it created you know you create something, you own it, and you you can then exploit it. It can kind of keep um, giving back to you after that, rather than just taking something off the shelf in a stock library or just borrowing the equity of a piece of music that everybody knows and loves but has its own identity when you create something it's it's yours and you can you can get all these benefits that you don't even anticipate until later on like oh we can use this piece of music again in the uh sequel to this game and it will get fans excited and they'll know exactly what game we're talking about as soon as the trailer starts that's pretty powerful so the last project i want to talk about um also one of the most bananas projects um, that we've worked on is for the World Cup uh, sponsored by Visa. And the idea was to create an experience for fans that, a branded experience for fans that got people into the excitement of the World Cup. Uh, I'm going to play you uh, our case study for this project, which kind of does a better and more succinct job of laying out what we did, and then I'll talk about it in a little bit more detail. So here it is. The goal was to express very particular elements of their country, from rituals to you know, even just simple things like the food they eat, the way they dress, what they do on game day. Things like this we wanted to overlap with the videos. Uh, it wasn't like uh, going out there and making a commercial, it was more about uh, going out there and capturing real life and real people. It was important for um, the, the visuals to, to really fit in with what the music was expressing. Every country has its own samba, its own joy its unique way of dancing with the football. So the 32 composers had to arrange the Brazilian song Maria Caipirinha using national instruments and rhythms. We had to make sure that all of our composers are working in the same musical key, in the same tempo, and the same structure without losing the groove and losing the beat. Because this music had to work with their films. Samba of the World is like an interactive music video experience. You drop in, you're in a country, at any point in time, you can you know, switch over instantly to a different country so that you really feel like you're traveling the world when you click over. A page explains all the national details of each Samba video, like the three women dressed according to the years Germany won the World Cup, or the Dutch girl wearing Johan Cruyff's legendary number. Seals from the footage were used in hundreds of social media posts, and the book was delivered to the visa clients around the world, which then helped on the output of the project. It kind of got everywhere. Samba of the World is like a 32 chapter story showing that although we are all different all around the world, we share the same passion for celebrating football. One of the common um, selling points of music that has been always trumpeted by composers in the marketing side of the world for decades now is that it can create an emotion. Um, and that emotion can take the lead in a, in a marketing message. Um, so this campaign really started with a song. It started with a song from Brazil um, with that, that very iconic melody. Um, and the idea was how could we create an experience where each country that qualified for the World Cup, you know, 
uh, where you feel like you're part of their excitement. So the melody became sort of the the excitement of the World Cup. It cr- kind of created that emotion. It made it a, th- a tangible thing. And then we brought that melody to every country, worked with composers in each country, and created our own arrangements, um, very specific to each country's culture. Those arrangements then were what each director in each country could cut to. Again, that they, working on such a tight timeline and very limited resources um, on the video production side, how amazing and helpful was it for them to have a really amazing piece of music to cut to, already approved? So this is a great example of a project where it didn't really exist until the music kind of came together in everybody's heads and we could hear what it was and how it was going to be translated to different cultures. And that's the amazing thing about music is that you can have a melody and then present it in different uh, in different ways. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, we're around. Love to help with the project. Uh, music is a really powerful and underused tool and... Uh, We'd love to help you brainstorm how a project can start there because that's something you can do right now without having to shoot anywhere. And I know all the musicians that are sitting around waiting for recording work would love to work on something. All right, bye. Stay safe and stay healthy.